I want to greet you all in the wonderful and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a powerful name. Amen. What a matchless name. Amen. 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 Uh, the name that's incomparable, incomparable. Amen. Amen. There's nothing like the name of Jesus. Amen. Demons tremble by the sounding of the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. And therefore our approach is in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. It's good to be with the believers this afternoon Amen. of like precious faith. And first of all, I want to thank you all for the wonderful lunch that we enjoyed this afternoon. To all the sisters and those that contributed, thank you so, so much. Amen. They say in Congo, I am fed up. <laughs> Amen. So we really enjoyed ourselves. Uh, may God richly bless you. Amen. I just want to say uh, this morning, uh, I was given a standing ovation. I don't deserve that at all. I believe, amen, if uh, there's any glory to be given, it must be to the one, the only one, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He has made all this possible for us. Amen. I remember when uh, our Brother Fortune just started an outreach work on the East Rand. Amen. I was so right behind him. Amen. I could see in this man, Amen. There is a potential. I could see in this man he's unstoppable. Amen. In his condition that he is, amen, he just wants to do the will of the Lord. Amen. amen. And uh, that brought us to where we are today. Amen. We've tried different places and, and rentals. Amen. And uh, the one, the last place was the pastor saw how the group was really growing. Amen. And his group was diminishing. Amen. That's what. That's the difference of the Word of God. Amen. Although uh, we we don't believe that God counts His men, He weighs them. Amen. It's not about numbers, but it's about the quality of word that we have. Amen. And uh, seeing that, He pushed up the rental to almost hundred percent. And at that time, we couldn't afford the rentals there, and uh, we were searching for a place of fellowship. Amen. And uh, we needed a place of fellowship. The houses has become too small for the group out there. And uh, God has uh, finally led our precious brother to this place. He was passing here and he saw the for sale sign. And he called me and said, there's a church for sale. I didn't wait for another invitation. We in our car and we came right over here and we looked at the place. And I said, Lord, if it's your will, your will will definitely be done. Amen. amen. We identify this place as a place of worship. Amen. Although uh, when we enter this place, they use it as a place of worship, but uh, they did not worship the same God that you worship. Amen. When we came in here, yeah, they were smoking all over the place and the fridges at the back was full of alcohol. Amen. And there was a Bible and everything around here. Yeah, they were called the Freemasons. Amen. This place was just for male. There was no sisters, no women allowed to worship here. And uh, yeah, many things took place. And it was actually a place of conference for, for businessmen. And uh, the Freemasons, actually the uh, presidents and, and, and the hierarchies, they go to such churches. Amen. And so uh, we look at the place and and, and, and the price was a bit steep for us. We could not afford the place. And um, we negotiated with the seller. And uh, well, there were so many people that was also interested in the same building. But we didn't push. We were so dependent on the will of the Lord. Amen. So much so, before we even get the go ahead, I brought the brothers in here. And I said, let's pray. I don't think this place has ever heard a prayer like that. I don't think the way they were praying was different to the way we pray. We call Jesus on the scene. Amen. And we claim this building as a place of worship. And they were astonished. And they, they, they came and they inspect what are we doing? You know, it's foreign to them. 
And I, I, I find it strange that you call yourself a Christian and when you see people praying, it's foreign. <laughs> Let it never happen to you and I. Amen. The things of the Lord should never be foreign to Amen. us. Amen. Amen. It should be our daily walk and talk. Amen. Amen. They left us alone to do our thing and they went outside and smoked and, and all that and do that thing. When we came out there, he agreed to give us the place Amen. for the amount that we asked him to do. Not for one moment did I doubt that we've made the right decision. And I want to say to the local church, you're not supporting the cause this afternoon or fellowshipping here because of pity of this man. You know, in a relationship, you go in a relationship because of love. Amen. If you have pity or you feel sorry for your mate or the individual, uh, that relationship will not last. Amen. And I don't think our pastor won that kind of relationship. Amen. Because he has done this without any of our help. Amen. It was just him and God all the time. Amen. 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 Preaching this message of the hour. Amen. Amen. And uh, when you are here today, it's because of the love of God. Amen. And that you appreciate the message of the hour. So when we identify that in our precious brother, we couldn't do any other thing but to support him in the course and hand over the work of Boxburg, amen, to our precious pastor. I believe that God has called this man. Like I said, I've never doubted one word that we've made the wrong decision. I look back and I saw a few months ago there was a a youth fellowship right here at Boxburg Christian Assembly. And uh, it really touched my heart. It remember, imagine if this building was not here. Imagine if this church was not here. Where would some of you be today? Amen. 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 This church has already given birth to so many individuals here. Amen. And has led so many to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And that is the purpose Amen of this of Boxburg Christian Assembly. Amen. It's not to uplift any man. It's not to make any man a bishop or a big man. Amen. But to give God glory. Amen. And to see the kingdom of God. Amen. Being extended. Hallelujah. Amen. So may God richly bless you. The efforts that we've seen put in here. Amen. There's different. It's not just a matter of yes, we have received this building and now uh, we can just relax. I don't think Doc is in a relaxing mode. Mm -hmm. He's continually pushing and going, amen. amen, and trying to do even better. Amen. So may God continue to bless you, the feeble effort, the endeavors that you still have. Amen. May God just help you through it all. Amen. It's only what you do for Christ that's lasting. Amen. And I believe, amen, we're not doing it for a man. And all our contributions, it's for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May this church... And I, I, I was in the vicinity a few times already. Have you counted the churches around here? There's quite a few of them. This is a spiritual, a spiritual area. Amen. However, may this be the lighthouse. Yes. Amen. Amen. God has presented us with truth. Yes. Amen. And the truth stands alone. Yes. Hallelujah. And may this be a lighthouse in the area around. Amen. And people desire to serve the Lord that you serve. Amen. Amen. And look at your conduct. Amen. Look at your walk and talk. Amen. Brother, sister, you look at our, the other churches. Amen. When they exit. Amen. It seems like they're coming out of a party or it seems like it was a club or something. The dress code and, and how they talk and all those kind of things. Amen. It's just different. But when you look at the bride of Christ. Hallelujah, there's such an anointing over you. It doesn't end in the house of the Lord. You carry it wherever you go. You carry it outside. And, 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 and that is what we want to see happening. So may the good Lord bless you. I am very happy and I don't, I don't want to use the word proud. But I am very, very proud. We are not doing this to make anybody proud. Hallelujah. Amen. I can see this building being extended. 
I can see that there's a, a, a space for more. Amen. Amen. And uh, that does not just be it. I spoke to the deacons this afternoon, uh, a, a fiction of a church. Hallelujah. Where all the features are. There's a pulpit, there's a chorus leader, there's a band. Amen. But there's no function. Amen. It must be feature plus function as we heard this morning. It must be the presence of God, the mechanics, which are you, and the spirit, the dynamics come upon the individual, putting you into action. Amen. Hallelujah. So God bless you richly. Amen. All the items uh, this morning and this afternoon, we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Amen. I became emotional when our sister sing, you will understand and say, well done. Amen. Hallelujah. To all difficulties and the challenges that we have to get this building. You are relaxing, you're sitting right, but you don't know how, what it took to get where we are today. But you'll understand. Amen. And we will talk about it in the by and by. Amen. Amen. And when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I was just to say that. And why should I worry? Amen. Jesus cared for all of us. The Lord bless you richly. Amen. I was so blessed this morning with the precious Pastor Owen Paul. Amen. The wonderful quotations. Amen. And even amen, the title of the message. Amen. The meal and the oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. And when you bring the two together, amen, there's a cake coming. Amen. Amen. There's a cake on its way. Yes. Hallelujah. And the knowledge of the word, amen, is increasing. And I can see you have an understanding of the message of the hour. Amen. But that outside of the spirit, amen, it's just head knowledge. Amen. amen. We have to combine the thing. And brother, sister, there is a miracle your way. Amen. There's a revival your way. Amen. There's a cake coming. There's a cake in the making. Amen. The dynamics in the church. Hallelujah. The brother was saying, yeah, he says, uh, together there is a great gate coming, not just an understanding the word, but get into the spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. says, Jesus, uh, in your message, Jesus called Christ, the dynamics in the church. Oh, the, super, the supernatural in the church. Don't just exist, but try. <laughs> Amen. I was thoroughly blessed. I thought I need to just uh, repeat that this morning, this Amen. evening. So not to waste much time. Amen. We're going to build on what was said this morning, but just take you in another direction. Amen. As we prepare for the table. I believe uh, you need to have an understanding, amen, why you come to the table. And we're not just coming here because of understanding, but out of appreciation and thanking God for what He has done for us. Can we stand together? Thank you, Pastor Fortune, for the opportunity. Amen. To stand here and just to minister, say a few things that can help the church. I thank God when we hand the work over to Brother Fortune. Amen. We. We give him a solo flight. Amen. Amen. This church is sovereign. Amen. I want to repeat that again. This church is sovereign. Amen. Amen. With the pastor being the head of the church, there is no other head above the pastor. Amen. Amen. This church is not controlled by Randfontein or any other church. And the decisions they make here. Amen. It is the leadership of the church that is in control right here. So uh, we continue to pray for you. And I want you also to pray for the leadership. Pray for your deacons. Amen. That will be ordained very soon. Amen. That God will just uh, really give us leaders after his own heart. Amen. Amen. So God bless you richly. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. 
and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created the man. Psalms chapter 8. Let's read from verse 1. I will praise thee, O Lord, to Psalm 78. O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou might bestow the enemy and the avenger. Verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, take note, fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Hallelujah. And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the parts of the seas. O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Can we just ask the blessing of the Lord on this word. Dear Heavenly Father, the letter killeth, but it is the word, it is the spirit that giveth life. Amen. And Lord Jesus, we call Jesus on the scene to take your rightful position amongst us. May the angel of the Lord that was present, O oh God, when our prophet preached this message, be present here today. Amen. We can only say what has already been said. May you move from heart to heart and from seat to seat. May you come, Lord Jesus, and grant every desire. Oh, Lord Jesus, we cannot go out here the same as we came in. Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, for a transformation. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you come and change our hearts. Lord God, from a stony heart, the heart of flesh, and may Jesus come and, and rule and reign, oh God, from the throne of our hearts. Bless us this evening, Lord Jesus, as we ponder on these things, Lord. Uh, oh, Father God, and we will be mindful to give you all honor, praise, and glory at the end of this service. In Jesus' mighty name we ask it. Amen and amen. amen. You may take your seat. Now, why did Christ redeem us? I'm going to start with the very first quotation because I believe, amen, that we are called to be different. Hallelujah. We come through the different stages and we see the different church ages. Amen. And uh, let's just start from Luther and Wesley and Pentecost and where we are today. And that brings us to a question, why did Christ, uh, what did, he, did Christ redeem us for? Did he redeem us just to put our names on a book, just to become members of a church? Amen. Just to wall, uh, wear long dresses? Amen. Or just to wear the title of message? Amen. And, and, and having a little bit more knowledge than the other uh, nominal Christians? No. He has redeemed us to give us, amen, a superpower. Amen. amen. He has redeemed us, brother, sister, amen, to take us back, amen, to, to, to the Eden conditions. Because I believe, brother, sister, that the message of the hour is the, is the only thing that parallels, amen, Genesis. Amen. Because in the beginning it was the word, amen, it was the spoken word, and at the end it will be the spoken word again. Hallelujah. So God has prepared a church. Amen. An individual that's in the house today that came to this world speaking lies. That came to this world that was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Amen. God, amen, has called and elected you. Amen. A man born in sin. Amen. That has forgotten all about where he come from. Amen. That suffered from amnesia. Amen. And God sent a 
messenger, amen, the mama eagle around and to give a scream over your life and to tell you, come out of her, my people, and separate yourself. Hallelujah. Do not be not partakers of her evil doings. Amen. Brother, sister, we are called, amen, to a higher podium today. Amen. In the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. And I believe, brother, sister, we are in a, in a sphere, amen, where the devil cannot get you. Unless you come down to his level. Amen. He can never come to your level. For him to get to your level, amen, he needs to repent, he needs to be baptized, amen, he needs to receive the Holy Ghost, he needs to receive the Spirit, hallelujah, and that the devil cannot do. Now I want to remind the church, amen, there is a change, amen. Brothers and brothers, let me speak of an orchestra. Amen. He says, when the conductor, amen, conduct the orchestra, amen, when he goes up, amen, the individual should understand the size, amen, we are moving upwards, amen, if you go down and the conductor moves up, you are in trouble, hallelujah, so we, there's a change happening today, amen, and you need to be aware of the change, and you need to be prepared, and you need to be Tune in with the conductor. You need to be in the same spirit of the conductor. And the conductor needs to be in the same spirit of the composer. Hallelujah. The one that wrote, hallelujah. Amen, brother, sister. That wrote this hymn sheet that we're going to read from and pray. And pray from, brother. And we are little instruments in the hands of God. And making our different sounds. Amen. But we have to follow, amen, the instructions. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe today that God has wrote, he's the composer of the word. Amen. 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 When he goes up, we need to go up. When he goes Amen. down, we need to go down. I want to make an example of an Abram. Amen. Amen. When God said, Abram, you shall have a son. Amen. Amen. God promised him a son. Amen. A promised son. Amen. And his wife overheard and she laughed in her heart. Amen. To make a long story short, Sarah laughed. And, and then the next time went on, there was no child. And then the impatience came and Sarah said, Man, Abram, you know I'm an old woman. Yeah. My body, I don't think I will be able, amen, to present to you that boy, the son, amen, that God is is speaking about. Amen. Why don't you go to my servant Hagar? Yeah. Amen. A young woman, and I think she's full of life, and I think through her, amen, the child will come. Amen. You know, that was so off, amen, the, the words of the composer. Amen. The composer said, you and Sarah shall have a son. Amen. Hallelujah. So they went off the note. Amen. And by doing that, you know, Abram loved Ishmael so much. Yeah. Abram loved Ishmael up, my son. Yeah. My son. My son. In Afrikaans, they say, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And daddy's boy. Yeah. And he was Abram's son. Yeah. But according to the composer, there was no place for Ishmael. Yeah. Ishmael was not Abram's son. That's why Jesus, uh, uh, God could say, Abram, you take your son, your only son, go and sacrifice him. And now people would go around, come around and say, the word of God contradicts itself. Abram had two sons, and now God says, your only son, Isaac. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. We thank God that we are called to be different. Amen. Isaac came before the name change. Isaac, uh, Ishmael. Yeah. Ishmael was truly Abram's son. Yeah. Abram. Yes. And then came a name change, Abraham. Yeah. And then Isaac was born. Yeah. And Isaac was the only son of Abraham. Yeah. Amen. Brother, sister, God has gone away. Amen, brother, sister. If we go out of the way, amen, and if you are chosen and elected by God, God brings you back into life. Amen. And then, brother, sister, the music sheet, amen, brother, sister, could go play. Hallelujah. And they could all fall in line with the composer. And there was an Isaac, the promised son. And on and on. So, brother, sister, let's not add or take away. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's follow the instruction. Yes, sir. Now, I believe today, 
as we speak on what did Christ redeem us for? Yes. Something happened in the beginning when God says, Amen, let us create man sure. in our own image yeah. and likeness. And in that, brother, sister, God bestowed upon man and invest man, uh, in man power and authority and dominion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. But he had to obey because, amen, the, 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 the composer said, the day you eat of that tree, that day you will surely die. Yes. That day power will be removed from you. Yes. That day authority will be removed from you. Yes. That day, amen, dominion will be removed yes. from you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And they were brothers and sisters in fellowship, in unison, in the garden, amen. And God would come down, amen, at the cool of the day. And brothers and sisters interact with his son, amen, and have fellowship with his children. Yes. What a wonderful family. And then the enemy came in and they fell, fell into sin. Hallelujah. And that stripped Adam from power. That stripped Adam from dominion. That stripped him from all the rights that God has given him. Because when God came down one evening and he, he, he was looking for a son. Hallelujah. He was looking, the prophet says, for himself in his son. And his son, brother and sister, could uh, not contain him anymore. Yeah. And he said, Adam... Yeah. Adam, where art thou? Yes. And I wonder how many times God comes around and, and looks for himself inside of you. Yeah. Amen. And sometimes sin brings a separation. Amen. From you and Father. Amen. And there's a big wall and God is looking. It's not that he doesn't know where you are, but he's looking for himself in you. Amen. Amen. Adam, Adam, where am I in you? Yeah. And they were in hiding because, amen, God's word was not in them any longer. Yeah. Amen. And because of that, amen, God, amen, prepared and slaughtered a lamb and covered their nakedness, amen, and put them out of the garden. Yeah. What did Christ redeem us for? Yes, sir. He had uh, the book of redemption, he had the title deeds to the dominion and power. And God took it away. Yeah. Amen. Because of sin. And put him out of the garden. Yes. And here come Christ. The Lamb of God. Amen. Slain for your nakedness and for your sin. Yes. What did he redeem us for? To take us back to Adam conditions. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He wants to restore and give to you back the power, the dominion. Hallelujah. That Adam has lost in the beginning. Brother and sister, he wants to give it back to you. Are you prepared to receive that kind of dominion? Now we'll see, we have to find out tonight, hallelujah, what did Adam had? Or what did Adam lost that we must gain? Hallelujah. Yeah. So first of all, let's find out what dominion is all about. Dominion is to govern. So God redeemed you to one day govern. And it is not something way in the future. Amen. Because Romans says, amen, that you and I will have dominion over sin. Yeah. So your dominion starts, amen. But you cannot govern, amen, and have control over the birds of the air, over the, 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 the fish of the sea, and the cattle and the beasts of the field, if you can't even have dominion over sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have to start, and God has given you the power. If you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God has already invested in you a kind of power, even to have dominion over sin. And I can say tonight, brother, sister, that a true son and daughter of God sin no more. Amen. Can I say that again? Amen. A true son and daughter of God sin no more. Amen. Yes, we make this Mistakes, brother, sister, but we have dominion over sin. And sin, amen, doesn't govern our lives anymore. Sin doesn't dominion, has dominion over us anymore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So dominion means to exercise absolute authority. That is what Adam had. He could exercise absolute authority in the absence of God. Amen. He could speak to the animals. Hallelujah. He could divert rivers. Hallelujah. All the power invested in him. He was in the 
image of God and in his likeness. And that speaks of power and dominion. And that is why you must be born again. If there's any individual in the house that's not born again, hallelujah, there's no way that you will ever have, amen, and exercise this power and dominion that God has promised. Because your rebirth is taking you back, amen, brothers and sisters, to image and likeness. Amen. Hallelujah, you shall be him. Amen. Hallelujah, he'll invest in you the power, amen, brother, to rule and to reign and amen. to govern. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want you to take this very serious tonight. Amen. We find people in the message that take, still take chances. Amen, brother, sister, with the word that God has sent to us in this day. Hallelujah. The end is upon us. Amen. If, I, if there's in, any individual in the house, amen, that doesn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ, it's your moment. Amen. Lord, you've made so many promises. And I cannot obtain and identify myself with any of that unless I show full obedience. And the prophet says full obedience qualifies you for the token. I want to say tonight, full obedience qualifies you, amen, for power and for dominion. Hallelujah. It qualifies you for authority. Hallelujah. Not to be greater. Hallelujah, but this kind of authority humbles you. This kind of dominion humbles you and makes you love and respect one another. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Dominion is also to rule or to hold in subjection. Amen. And the Bible says, Satan, amen, uh, the ruler of this age. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he, brother and sister, he is the ruler of his kingdom surround. Amen. And he had so many lives under his domain. Yeah. And you and I was under his domain at one stage. Because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Yeah. And that is why God has called us aside. Amen. You must have the mind of Christ. You must come through a rebirth. So that in order for you to receive, amen, not just an anointing, but the person of the Holy Ghost. And now it's Christ living in me. Amen. It's a new person. It's a new individual. Amen. That God has called us to. Amen. So Satan, if there's anybody here tonight, amen, that Satan still has dominion over you and controlling your life and steer you in a direction that you're not supposed to go. Amen. Go on your knees and call on the name of Jesus Christ and break the influence of Satan on your life. Break the influence of any other evil spirit on your life. Amen. I believe, amen, is here tonight to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. amen. Dominion also means to exercise lordship and to reign. And I want to say tonight, what should give the, the individual joy tonight, amen, is destiny. People are in a condition and the world is in a condition that they are, amen, because, amen, they have no revelation of their destination. They're not sure where they're going to. They're not sure what's waiting for them. Brothers and sisters, they go this way and that way. And they try all kinds of things, amen, brother, to satisfy, amen. There's longing and there's, there's void in their lives. Yeah. But the joy, amen, of a son and daughter of God is destiny. Hallelujah. It's not so much what we possess, what we have, amen, our positions, amen, our education, all those things. It's good, amen, but that is not the thing that should give you the joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. It's destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Because as you're sitting here, you have to believe tonight that you are elected Amen. to be here tonight. Amen. You are elected to be a part of this bride of the elect of God. Amen. Amen. And your election now looks to the foreknowledge of God. Amen. Because of the knowledge that he has. Amen. If he did not know what's going to take place in 2024, he is not God. Amen. If he doesn't know the beginning from the end, he's not Alpha and Omega. But because he's Alpha and Omega, amen. Brother and sister, he elected you, the Bible says, before the foundation of the world. Amen. And I can say that you are coming from the same place where the Lamb is coming from. Amen. The Bible says the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. God has elected you before the foundation of the world. And today your election looks to the 
knowledge, the foreknowledge of God. And the foreknowledge of God takes you to destiny. Amen. Amen. He points you. Your destination is already sorted out as far as God is concerned. Amen. Amen. God, amen. He's not a God of confusion. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a brother, sister. Amen. Before you were manifested here on the earth, there was a word body, what we call a theophany body, awaiting for you. It's already there, and when you hear this kind of messages and the true word of God coming down, Reverend says, you heard from your theophany. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a body waiting for you. Amen. Amen, brother, sister. But in your sinful condition, you cannot go to that body. You need to be born again. Amen. Hallelujah. To be anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. And prepared for that body. That's so waiting for you. Amen. You see anointing? And it doesn't come automatic. This dominion and power, this doesn't come automatic. It takes a faith. And it takes a walk in love with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's the only way the love of the world is in you. The love of God is not in you. So you have to have the love of God in your heart. Amen. In order for you to qualify. Amen. For this, what we call dominion. Yeah. Jesus came into the temple. Hallelujah. And he was anointed. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. I think the bride of Christ, the individual, can say exactly the same today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. Hallelujah. There shouldn't be any other Spirit upon you but the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He took a whoop. Amen. He drove out those money, money changers. And they asked him, by what authority are you doing this? Hallelujah. He was anointed. Hallelujah. And he said, he's the word. And he said, my father, my father's house, amen, shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Hallelujah. Amen. He had the authority to do what he did. Yes, sir. And that is why we lay emphasis tonight, amen, on what did Christ redeem us for. Yeah. He redeemed you to, 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 to have that kind of authority. Amen. Wherever you, sometimes you don't have to say it. You come amongst your friends and they were talking about this, that, and the other, and immediately you see the, the conversation change. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They might say, yeah, um, this is coming or who is coming. But brother, identify the presence and the spirit that's upon you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We change the atmosphere. Right. Hallelujah. And as we're sitting here today, we're sitting in an atmosphere. Hallelujah. You might think you're sitting, amen, on red chain. But brother, in the spirit, God has lifted amen. up. Amen. That is why we can move, amen, brother, sister, and have a preview of what God has in store for us because he has put us in that atmosphere. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So it's in a supernatural anointing. It belongs to the bride of Christ. It belongs to you, the elect. But it doesn't come automatically. Yeah. Amen. It's a walk of faith. It's a life of dedication and love to God. Amen. Yes, sir. And now it's, things are changing and, 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 and as the music sheet, amen, the conductor is standing, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he's conducting the church of Almighty God. Amen. We're going an octave higher. We see, amen, and we hear of wars and rumors of wars. Amen. amen. We hear and we see how children disrespect parents and all that. And we understand, amen, by the conductor, amen, this is the age. Hallelujah. We see the, the fig tree putting forth its buds. And we're understanding, amen, by the conductor that the coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. And there's a group of people, amen, that must get themselves ready for a change. For it is in a moment and a twinkling of an eye, amen, that you and I will be changed. Amen. And we shall be like him. Hallelujah. So, brother, sister, we cannot remain the same. Why did Christ redeem us? Hallelujah, we have to stay in contact and close proximity of the Holy Ghost. Amen, brother, when he changes, you change. Yes. It's something very difficult for human beings is to accept change. Yes. 
Hallelujah. We yeah. cannot accept change easily. Yeah. When a messenger came to South Africa, amen, and he preached, amen, on the baptism and the Godhead, amen, that God, amen, uh, Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New. Amen. He shall be called Emmanuel, which is interpret God with us. Amen. And brother, sister, when he, when he laid those things down, they rejected him. Brother, sister, he had no pulpit anymore to preach to. No. Yeah. They could not take the change. But there's a group of people, hallelujah, that's ready for change. Yeah. Hallelujah. Change is not easy. Amen. The older, the old school people here today, amen, you give them a computer, amen, they hold on to their files. They want to, they, they want that hard copy and they, they, they keep themselves busy. Amen. But there's an easier way. What you take you two days to do, you can do in two hours on your computer. Amen. But because we are old school, we prefer, we want to feel and we want to see and, 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 and we cannot handle the computers. Don't think it's only your teachers, all the teachers, amen, my daughter, amen, this is an HOD, and she had an old lady work, working there, just about to go up and she says, listen here, yeah, we introduce you to this laptop and to this computer, that old lady wants to have nothing to do, she's degree and everything educated to be a teacher, but she's not going to touch a computer, no. so change, hallelujah, it's not easy, amen. And I want to say that uh, the conductor, the prophet says, yeah, the great symphony of God in the message God's word calls for a total separation. The great symphony of God's word being beat out. The changes and the junction is only God changing time. I want to say today that this change is happening. Hallelujah. It's not determined by man. Amen. Let no man come and tell you this is now the, the, the change, amen, in the orchestra. This is now the change, amen, of the word of God or the season for this and the season for that. Sometimes we feel excited and we try to say this is now the season for this age and for this and that. God determines that. By his word, it is written, amen, and the conductor will show you when the seasons are changing. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. As much as we are excited and we say this church in Boxburg will from now on, nobody's going to work because the coming of the Lord is in two months and three months and all that. Hallelujah. Amen. That's from the devil. Yeah, man. Sure. Mm. Hallelujah. He's the one that determines the seasons. He said, not even the angels know, amen, when he will come. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the changes, the junction, is only God's changing time. Amen. He said, like the director in a symphony, when we see these changes of ages and changes of times, look down on the sheet here, and you will find out that we're supposed to be here. Yeah. They got to do this. There's no way for them to keep from it. And the music, to a man that doesn't understand the symphony, yeah. what is it? It is a bunch of rattling noise. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are not tuned in, if you are not spiritually minded, amen. When you sit in the house of the Lord and the word comes forth, it's just a rattling. Mm -hmm. And you can't wait. When is this man going to finish preaching? You want to go home. Hallelujah, if you don't understand, but if you understand, amen, you'll say, preach it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You say amen to amen. it. Because of an understanding and a revelation, amen, of the spirit of the conductor. Yes, amen. It's just a rattling noise. He doesn't understand it. Right. He's not even interested. He's wishing. I wish they just shut up so I could go home. He's not interested because he doesn't know the symphony. He doesn't know it. It's grace that makes you appreciate the symphony and understand that there are truly people that you wish the man can just shut up so that we can go home. <laughs> 
But we will not consider that man tonight. Amen. We will consider those that love the word. Amen. And we'd like to move on. Amen. But the composer knows the end from the beginning. Amen. Aren't you happy for that? Hallelujah. Amen. He says, and if the director is in the same spirit of the composer, he cannot act it out. Yes. So that is why we needed the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that is why God make sure, amen, that the Holy Ghost is available. Amen. amen. But how do we receive it? He says, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive a gift. Amen. How much must you pay for a gift? You don't pay for a gift. A gift is freely given. Amen. So God has made provision. Amen. He gives us the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The conductor that will lead you into all truth. Because it's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He knows the end from the beginning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory. Any other spirit cannot act that out. Hallelujah. It is done by signs. And if the sign don't indicate it, how is the musicians going to play it? Amen. If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who can? Who will know how to prepare for war, to retreat, or what doing? Amen. In the symphony, there's a few things that we have to look at. Is the timing. Brother John, he's a musician. He knows there's a beat. Amen. And the, con the conductor, amen, and the hymn sheet, amen, shows you. Don't be in a hurry. Amen. Sometimes only believe. Now, if you sing only believe with a beat, with a beat of, uh, we say amen, amen, amen. Oh, what a confusion! There's a certain beat. Amen. To this, he says there's a rhythm. Amen. And finally, there's harmony. Hallelujah. I made an example to the church. I said I was elected them in primary school, amen, for to sing in the, the school choir. Yeah. I don't say I'm a good singer. <laughs> but those days the song Dry Bones just came out, you know. And bones and bones and bones and dry bones are gonna move now. And, and, and I was the baritone in that song. So when they say the hip bone connected to the backbone and the backbone and I would say and bones and bones <laughs> and dry bones hey, and they identify, they recognize there's a man for the choir they took me to the choir the choir master didn't see me it's the teachers that just identified and took me in there so here yeah, we stand and the choir master is there and here the triangle and that triangle make a certain sound, a C. Mm. Ding, C, C. And it goes to every individual. Ding, C. Hey, right, you stay, one sec. Ding, C. He came to me. Ding, C. <laughs> out! And I was put out of the choir, never to return. <laughs> because, amen, the harmony, amen. I didn't follow, I didn't know what he was looking for. You know, you, in baritone there's a C. In tenor there's a C. Amen. In alto there's a C. Man, there's a C. But uh, I didn't know what he was looking for. And was holding on to my breath. And I was put out. So in the symphony, it is true, if you don't understand, you will lose. Amen. You will lose the leadership of the Holy Ghost. You will lead in a direction, amen, and you will not identify the true will of God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So, Rebbe asked the question in the message, the fundamental foundations, and that is where this thought comes from. Paragraph 25. What did Christ redeem us for? So it was not just a tongue sucking today. And I want you to understand there is a lot of things going around, this message of the hour, 
is something like we can just listen to tapes at home. Amen. At least we listen to the message. We are safe. You are not safe. I can tell you that now. Amen. Uh, we were ridiculed for bringing another church. Amen. It's not about church. It's about the message. It's about the tape. It's about the books and all that there. But you know what? We have a after the doctor left us, there's two doctors left in the church, and uh, we spoke to them. They studied for seven to eight years, and now it's something that you get on Google. They call it Doctor Google. <laughs> have you heard of Doctor Google? Yeah. Yes. When you have back pains. Now you describe, you go to Google, and you describe to Google what you're feeling. Yeah. And then Dr. Google responds. When you have a broken arm, and you go to Dr. Google, Dr. Google can help you. When you have a broken leg, when you have cancer, and all these things, Dr. Google cannot help. You have to go to the man with the seven and eight years experience. Hallelujah. To help you and to carry you through. It's good to go to Dr. Google. They will not mislead you. They try their best to help you. But finally, this man did not study for nothing. Hallelujah. And that is what I believe of the Holy Ghost today. You're sitting at home in the comfort of your chair and just press. Tomorrow your daughter wants to get married, and your son wants to be baptized, and you ask the thing to do that for you. Dr. Google. And he cannot do that for you. It is not fair. And they try to fight this Dr. Google. Because the doctors have put so much effort in. And they paid high, they paid, they paid for years and sacrifice. Come on now. And here comes free treatment. Amen. Looks like they will be out of work one of these days. But I want to guarantee them. Yes. Amen. That they will not be out of work. Amen. Dr. Google cannot do all things. Hallelujah. Dr. Google cannot feel. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Google cannot see. Yeah. Amen. And on and on the list goes. Amen. But you come to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And he works through his offices. Amen. He'll place in his church. Amen. The fivefold ministry. Amen. Brother and sister, that will help the church. Amen. That's actually the dress wear of the church is the fivefold ministry. Can I say that again? Amen. Amen. The dress wear of the church. Amen. Your spiritual welfare. Amen. Depends on the fivefold ministry. Let's be the name of the Lord. Okay, where did you find it, quote, brother? I was saying that, just waiting for you, just display it there. What did Christ redeem us for? Did you ever think what he redeemed us for? Why didn't he just make you an, order, an, an atonement? And say, now, there is no need of giving them deep powers. There is no need in making this man a son of God. There is no need in doing that. I will just ask you to believe it and write his name in the book of heaven and that will settle it. But he gave us these redeemed blessings that we might operate the work of God by the energy of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That is why he redeemed us. Redemption means out of and into. Isaiah said you were hewn out of a rock. So you cannot be part of a tree or any other material. You're part of that rock. You're hewn out. And I want to say today, when God redeemed us, take us out of sin and the muck of this world, amen, placing us by His grace back, amen, into His marvelous love, it's out of and into. That is redemption. Hallelujah. But it's not just about writing your name down. He redeemed you also so that you can exercise the energy that's in the vine. Amen. Hallelujah. You are the branches. Amen. You are his hands and his feet. Amen. He needs you. Hallelujah. To exercise that. 
And that is why God has redeemed you for. Amen. Let's not disappoint you. Let's be prepared and ready when God needs you. Amen, brothers and sisters, to act and to exercise that energy. May we be ready. Amen. He gave us this redeemed blessing that we must operate the works of God by the energy of the Holy Ghost. In St. John chapter 15, he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Do you know that the vine can't bear fruit? Come on up, Although the fruit is in the vine, but the fruit cannot be brought forth from a vine. It has to have the branch to bear the fruit. Yeah. And you are the branches. Now the vine with all of its energy cannot produce anything unless the branch is willing to receive that energy. Yeah. Why did Christ redeem us? He want to energize you. And I want to tell the church, prepare yourself. Amen. Make yourself ready to receive that energy. To receive that power. Hallelujah. Amen. And I think when we leave this building, amen, we don't have to walk with stooped shoulders and, and soldier, uh, shoulders and, 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 and worry and fret. Hallelujah. We go out, amen, with our breasts. Amen. We are sons and daughters of God. Yes, amen. God has empowered us. Amen. You speak to that sickness. Amen. It's in your heart and in your life. Amen. You address it. You have the power. You have the authority. Amen. By God's word. Amen, brother, sister, to take control. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brother Bram says Satan's dominion. Amen. Is just to the river. River means death. Amen. And, and some people, amen, they enjoy the kind of dominion that Satan's offer. But it ends, amen, by the river Jordan. And when you pass through the river Jordan, you need something, somebody, amen, to raise you up. And somebody to take you further. And Satan is not there. The Bible says Satan came, brother and sister, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, John 10, 10, I have come so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And this kind of life, amen, and authority, amen, brother, does not end, amen, at the grave. Yes. Yeah. Amen. It's beyond the grave, as David says, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Because I know he is with me. Yeah. I know you go with me, you go through it. Yeah. Amen. You'll wait for me on the other side. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he say, well done, my good and faithful yeah. servant. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The first thing Adam lost when they fell in sin was likeness and the image of God. God knows no sin. There's no sin in God. There's no unbelief in God. And there's no disobedience in God. Amen. And, and, and Adam made himself guilty of all that. And God just put him out. And Brother Bram says since then, amen, the plan of redemption kicked in. And God says, I'm not going to leave, amen, the human race in this fallen condition. I will send, amen, my only son, hallelujah, to redeem men back and to restore unto them all the power that Adam has lost. I will restore it unto men. Brother, sister, aren't we a privileged people? Hallelujah. It reminds me of, of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 where the Bible says, And the son came to his father and said, Father, give me all my belongings. Amen. And, and I, I need to go. Amen. On the journey. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm tired. Amen. Of your headship. I'm tired. Amen. Of home. I'm tired of being caged up. Amen. I want to be a free man. Amen. The father gave him everything. Amen. That belongs to him. And the Bible says he wasted it with friends. He wasted it out in the world. And he finally found him in a found himself in a big style. And he came to himself and he says, In my father's house are servants that's living better and that's eating better. And I must feed myself, amen, from this junk that the pigs are eating. He said, I will get up and go home. And I'll tell Father, Father, I'm so sorry I've sinned, amen, before heaven and before thee. Make me one of your servants. And he prepared a nice speech. He got up and on his way home, Father, recognized him coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. 
and, and, and before he could even make his confession, Amen, Father, embrace him, and Father was shouting, Amen, get the fetid calf, Amen, slaughter it, and, and get shoes, and get a, a new set of clothes, Amen, for my son, which was lost, Amen, has come home. Oh. Hallelujah. Brother, sister, redemption. Amen. You can be way out in the world, amen, brother, sister, and find yourself in a, in a big sty. But because your father's blood is running through your veins, you remain a son, doesn't matter in what condition you are. Amen. And brother, sister, at the right time, amen, if you can respond, amen, to the still small voice, it will lead you home. Amen. Brother, sister, you can stand up and say, Father, I come home. And you know, it doesn't change your position. Amen. Father didn't say, well, amen, now that you desire to be a servant, amen, that, uh, Father cannot demote you, and the message cannot demote a son. Amen. Hallelujah. When God has made you a son, you can never be a servant. Amen. With all the sin that that boy, that young boy has committed, you could never qualify to be a servant. Father's blood was running. Hallelujah. All the mistakes that we have committed, yes. all the things that we have done, really doesn't disqualify you to be a son and daughter of Glory. God. I tell you tonight, Amen. Father, recognize the blood is running in your way. He recognized, Amen, brother, sister, the, 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 the life that you carry is yes. the same life that you carry. Blessed be the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Adam lost likeness and image, and that stripped him from dominion. It stripped him from a position to govern. It stripped him from a position to have authority. What a sad state of affairs. And I want to say tonight, as we come to this altar tonight, to this table, it's by invitation. And this what qualifies you for the table, amen, is the victory that you have in your heart. Amen. amen. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Amen. Hallelujah. What qualifies you is that redemption, amen, that he paid the ultimate price for me. You see, John, in Revelation chapter 5, a man is saw one sitting on the throne, and the Bible says, and, 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 and he had a book in his hand. Yeah. And John, by revelation, realizes that that book does not belong to the man that sits on the throne. It doesn't belong to the one that sits on the throne. That book needs to come and be restored to Adam's fallen race. Amen. Because in that book, brother, sister, is your likeness. Amen. In that book is your power, your authority, your dominion. Amen. And it must come back to Adam's fallen race. And John said, somebody must get that book. Hallelujah. And, and, and he looked in heaven, amen, above. And he found nobody worthy. He looked on the earth, amen, not even a prophet was worthy. He looked beyond and beneath the earth. And he found nobody worthy to take that book. Amen. And the Bible says that John started to weep. He says, I know what redemption means. Amen. I know what restoration means. But without that book, hallelujah, there's no restoration. Without that book, there's no power. There's no authority. There's no way back to Eden condition. Amen. That book needs to come back. Amen. And while he was weeping, he heard the voice say, Weep not, John. Amen. For the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Free. 
But instead he was thinking of you and I. He was thinking of the plan of redemption. He knew it was sin in the beginning. It was a blood sin. And the only thing that would redeem amen, Adam's fallen race, amen, is blood again. Oh, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, that sets me free. Amen. Amen. You know, church, we are saved by grace. But the blood of Jesus keeps us safe. Hallelujah. I believe that with all my heart. And that is why when we come to the table, it is in remembrance. It is in remembrance what Christ has done. And he gave up his life. Hallelujah. He could have called 10,000 angels. Amen. To the one who could say, come. And to the one who said, go. And brothers and sisters, allowing those Roman soldiers to, to spit on him and whoop him and all that. Yeah. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, his name is Jesus. Amen. He allowed it. He had to pay the ultimate price so that you and I can be safe. Amen. So when we come to this table, let's do it in appreciation of what God has done. Amen. Do it by revelation. Hallelujah. You couldn't die for yourself. Your pastor couldn't die. A prophet couldn't die for you. An angel couldn't die for you. Amen. God has to come and body himself. Amen. A man called Jesus. Called Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. And he walked, brother, sister, and he took our sins upon himself. Amen. Went to Calvary. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to wrap up here. What did Christ redeem us for? Dominion. We saw a perfect example in our day of dominion. I call it the first fruits. And you know when a farmer uh, uh, celebrated the first fruit the, 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 the whole plantation might be green, but if one came to maturity, he takes it and he celebrates. He says, as this one has come to maturity, so will the rest come to maturity. Amen. And I say, in our day, we had a man that would come to the podium. Amen. And he would say, with the power that is invested in me, I take every spirit under my control. With the power that's invested in me, I take dominion in this house. Amen. Tell me any man that has ever done that. And I think I must read that for you. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't give the brothers this quotation, but it's in the message how the angel came to me. 53 double 107. Rebram had the prayer line and he was discerning individuals. Amen. And the angel of the Lord came down. Amen. And he would, brother, sister, identify your sicknesses and the, the diseases. Hallelujah. He says, and that angel is hanging over a young woman sitting right over there. What do you think of it, lady? Got, you got the swollen spleen. Haven't you? Isn't that right? Do you believe me to be God's servant, prophet? You believe that God gave me his word. Stand to your feet and accept your healing and you'll get well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What did Christ redeem us for? Are we going to sit like this and wait, amen, for the waters to be stirred? Amen, so that we can jump in. Hallelujah. I believe He's here today. Amen. I believe He invested in you. Amen. And He said, you shall lay hands on the sick. Amen. Not the pastor only, not the deacons. Amen. Mommy, amen. when baby is sick, you shall lay hands on the sick. Amen. amen. Have faith in God this afternoon. Amen. Hallelujah. As a prophet discerned and he moved and he could see the light hanging over individuals. Amen. And give them that healing. I believe, brother, sister, you and I can do the same. Amen. And now the prophet says, let's say thanks be to God. Amen. It's paragraph 75. How oh, the angel came to me. And the congregation says, thanks be to God. Amen. Let's all uh, stand and give him praise.
praise everyone. Let's just thank him for our healing. And now he prays. He says, Lord Jesus, thou lovely one, heal all the sick and the needy here tonight. Lord, we give you praise. We know that you are here. We know that thy spirit is near to bless and to heal all that is needy. Now may the people, Lord, that's standing here accepting me, knowing that my strength is gone. But Lord, you are here. And now, as your servant, I take dominion over every unclean spirit in the building. I say to Satan, you are a loser. God has sent Christ and he's won the victory. And I charge thee by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come out of the people and leave them and go from them in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anybody in the house that needs that touch tonight, I believe this year, I might not be the prophet, but the same Jesus Christ that was present, it came down with that such anointing. You stand to your feet and you receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You say, Satan, I take dominion over my life. I take dominion. Hallelujah. I take control. Amen. It means invest power and authority. Take your hands off me. Take your hands off my children. Take your hands off my wife. Take your hands off my husband. Hallelujah. Come through for us. Anybody sick in the house tonight? Amen. Just raise your touch the hem of his garment as he's passing your way. Amen. From sea to sea, from heart to heart. Hallelujah. It is the dynamics, brother and sister, that's coming down tonight on the mechanics. You are just the mechanic and instrument, but the energy comes, amen, from the vine. Hallelujah. And may it flow through you, amen. And you receive, amen, your healing. You receive your victory. You receive overcoming power. Amen. Whatever you need or need may be. If you're unemployed, amen. If you struggle, amen, with this, that, and the other, education, whatever your needs may be, Jesus Christ is here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Take dominion, church. Take dominion. Hallelujah. Every evil spirit that's in the house tonight, amen, he cannot come up against the spirit of the living God. Amen. There's a change taking place. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet says, amen, you as the bride, you speak the word and he will perform it. Amen. Don't you want to do that tonight? Don't say I'm going to try. No, no, no. You do it by the authority that's invested in you. Amen. Say, Lord, I speak the word. You will perform it. You speak it tonight. You speak over your situation. You speak over the condition that you are in. Before the doctor touch you, amen. Hallelujah. Let go for all of us. Let go for Dr. Fortune. Let go for every individual. Amen. It is the word of God tonight. Hallelujah. We speak to that individual. Can we pray together? I want you to speak to him tonight. I want to lay your burden before him tonight. Amen. Touch my life, Lord Jesus, with those nails in our hands. As for thee, I love and daily take my stand. Amen. Won't you do that tonight? Amen. Talk to him tonight. Talk to him tonight, church. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of him tonight. Hallelujah. Address the situation. Hallelujah. If you have to mention it, hallelujah, before God, amen, just mention him, amen. And put the enemy to shame tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Any sin that needs to be confessed tonight, you confess it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll ask Pastor to lead us in prayer. Pray for every individual that's standing before we go over to the table.
of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. You see, that is what the Bible says. Except you do it, there is no life. You are the more or less showing that you are ashamed to identify yourself as a Christian because of the life that you love. Then this is really the showdown. If you don't do it, you have no life. If you do it unworthily, you are guilty of the body of the Lord. When you take this, it shows to the church that you believe every word of God. And I say that again. If you take communion, it shows to the church that you believe every word of God. Hallelujah. He is the bread of life that comes from God out of heaven. I believe every word that he says is the truth and I love by it to the best of my knowledge, says the prophet. God being my judge. I do not swear, I do not curse. I do not do these things because I love the Lord and the Lord knows it and bears me record. Therefore, you my brother and sister, I take this parcel of the body of Christ to know that I am not condemned with the world. You stay away from the table because you have any, many other excuses. I don't feel worthy. I don't think I've done this yesterday. You will be condemned with the world. Rembrandt says you take this to show that you will not be condemned with the world. You have confidence in God's pardon and God's forgiveness. Hallelujah. And the power that's in this communion. And the brethren says, even has healing power. Amen. So if you take of this communion, you can receive your healing. Amen. As it was done with the children of Israel. Amen. I take this parcel of the body to know that I am not condemned with the world. It's a blessing. I could give many testimonies of this where I have taken uh, that and explained it in the sick rooms and everywhere and they got healed. Remember when Israel took this stripe. Then Brother Bram says, when you come to this table, just be reverent, as reverent as you know how. Amen. The Lord bless you richly. Amen. If we have our Bibles, let's turn to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13. 